In this video, I want to discuss the topic of currency forward and futures contracts. Now, I'm not going to provide a, a comprehensive overview of these types of contracts. I'm mostly going to focus on the currency contracts. Um, for an introduction to futures, I will provide a link to some videos below this video. Now, these types of contracts can be used for things like hedging, which means taking positions in two markets so some or all of the losses in one position will be offset by gains in the other. And you want to keep in mind this is not necessarily a profit maximizing strategy because if the market you're in is going up and you're making money, you're going to lose money in the other position. But that's not the point. You're trying to reduce risk. Also, there's the case of speculation. Speculation is a case where you're taking a position in one market and betting on the direction of the price movement. In this case, it would be the foreign currency. Now, for currency futures and forward contracts, importers and exporters can use them to hedge the risk of unfavorable changes in exchange rates. A little terminology. The spot rate is the rate for immediate delivery. So if you're going to London tomorrow and you need pound sterling, you can go to the bank today and get um, pound sterling for your dollars at whatever the prevailing spot rate is. There's also something referred to as the forward rate. This is a rate that's agreed upon today, but for delivery at a later date. And the forward rate can be at a premium or a discount to the spot rate. So we'll use P to refer to um, as the premium for the forward rate. And so if it's positive, it's a premium. And if it's negative, it means the forward rate is at a discount to the spot rate. If we happen to know F and S, we can solve for P, which is the forward rate divided by the spot rate minus one. All right, a couple of quick numerical examples. Suppose the euro spot rate is $1.40. If the forward premium is 2%, let's find the forward rate. It's just going to be $1.40 times 1 plus 0 0.02, which is 1.428. Um, suppose the spot rate is $1.40 and the forward rate is 1.385. Let's find the forward premium or discount. And we can use this formula here. F over S will give us uh, minus 1 will give us negative 0 0.0107. Because it's negative, it means the forward rate is at a discount to the spot rate. It's lower. Forward and futures contracts. A forward contract is an agreement between a corporation and a financial institution, in the case of currency forward contracts, to exchange a specified amount of currency at a specified exchange rate, which is called the forward rate, on a specified date in the future. A futures contract is a standardized forward contract. Standardization allows the contracts to be traded. Contract size, delivery dates, contract expiration dates are all standardized. So here's a comparison of the two. Size of the contract. In the case of the forward contract, it's tailored to meet the needs of the institution. In the case of the futures, it's standardized. Delivery date, tailored to meet the needs of the institu individual or institution. In the case of the forward contract, Again, standardized for the futures contract. Security deposit, none for a forward contract, what's referred to as margin for the futures contract, which is essentially a security deposit. Clearing operation, this is going to be handled by the individual bank or broker for a forward contract, but it's going to be handled by a clearing house in the case of a futures contract. Um, in the case of uh, the clearinghouse or the futures contract, there's also referred to as something referred to as daily settlement or marking to market. That is, at the end of the day, the clearinghouse or the exchange takes the price, looks at who made money and who lost money, 
and debits or credits um, everyone's account. Those who have lost too much money may be asked to provide additional margin to put more money into their account. In terms of regulation, the forward contract is self-regulating. The futures contract is uh, regulated by the Commodities Futures Trading Commission or the National Futures Association. Liquidation, how are positions closed out? In the forward contract, mostly settled by actual delivery. So for example, if my firm needed 1 million pounds sterling and we went to JP Morgan Chase, it would be the case that we would go to them, they would have the million pound sterling, we would pay them um, you know, the appropriate amount of dollars. In the case of the futures market, because you don't know who's the other side of the transaction because you're going through the clearinghouse, it's usually done by offset. That is, I own a futures contract, I bought a futures contract, so if I sell an identical contract, I've essentially offset my position. Transactions costs, uh, these are set by the bank's buy and sell prices in the forward market, but in the futures market, they're done by brokerage commissions. Now, in terms of standard size contracts, here are a few of the currency futures contracts that are traded on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. In the case of Australian dollars, it's 100,000. In the case of British pounds sterling, 62,500 pounds sterling. Okay, Japanese yen, standard contract is 12,500,000 yen, etc. Because the futures contracts have specified contract sizes and delivery dates, in most instances, the hedge will be less than perfect. For example, if you want to hedge a position for 90,000 pounds, you'll either have to use one contract, which is 62,500 pounds, or you'll have to use two contracts, which is 125,000 pounds. So it's kind of, this is kind of right in the middle. You want to pick whatever's closest. All right, this is a little bit difficult because it's almost right in the middle. Um, also, delivery date may be different from when you're closing out your position. So again, you'll have to pick the closest delivery date you can, but usually expiring after you close out your position. What do the payoffs look like to a long position in the futures? The same as they look for a long position in stock. All right. If you buy at $1.50, if the rate goes up, you make money. If the rate goes down, you lose money. And if it's the case that it falls to zero, the forward rate goes to zero, in this case, the most that can happen is you lose $1.50 because you paid $1.50 for a pound and the price is now zero. Okay. In terms of the short position, it's exactly the mirror image. It, you remember, in this case, you sold for $1.50, so if the price goes up, you're going to lose money. If the price went to $1.60, you sold at $1.50, you have to buy back at $1.60, you're going to lose $0.10. Cents. The most money you can make on this transaction is $1.50, because you sold at $1.50, if the price goes to zero, then essentially you don't have to buy it back. It's all a profit. All right, let's talk a little bit about hedging using these types of contracts. Um, importers of goods will need to buy the foreign currency to pay for goods they are importing. Exporters will want to convert the foreign currency they receive into dollars. So both importers and exporters have positions in the spot market. Importers are going to need to buy the foreign currency in the spot market. Exporters are going to need to sell the foreign currency in the spot market. So these firms can hedge by taking a position in the futures market that will make money when they lose money in the spot market. An importer is worried about the spot rate rising in the future, so they should have a long position in the futures market. 
An exporter is worried about the spot rate falling in the future, so they, have, uh, they should take a short position in the futures market. Right, let's take a look at um, a position, a long position in the futures contract. So suppose EFAL Industries will be importing uh, 1.25 million euros of electrical parts from Germany in three months. The current exchange rate is $1.20 per euro. So the cost of the parts is $1.5 million at the current exchange rate. The 1.25 million uh, euros times 1.2 uh, dollars per euro. EFAW is concerned that the spot rate will be 1.25 per euro, which will increase its cost to 1.5625 million. So what does EFAW choose to do? EFAW chooses to buy 10 futures contracts. Remember, standard contract size is 125,000 euros with a futures price of $1.20. In, the, in three months, spot rates, say, have risen to $1.25. In this case, EFAW can buy euros at the futures rate of $1.20 and sell them at the spot rate of $1.25. All right? They make five cents per euro, or it turns out, based on the number of euros they're exchanging, they make $0.0625 million, which in this case exactly offsets the added cost from the strengthening of the euro. Let's take a, a second example, a short position in the futures contract. Wentz Incorporated will be exporting widgets to a firm in England. The value of the sale, which will be paid in pounds, um, is 6.25 million pounds. The current exchange rate is $1.50. At this exchange rate, Wentz will receive 9.375 million that is the number of pounds they they receive times the dollar fifty per pound at the current exchange rate, but once is concerned that the exchange rate may fall to a dollar thirty five um, leaving Wentz with um, eight point four three seven five million okay which is the six point two five million pounds times a dollar thirty five to protect themselves, Wentz can sell 100 pound uh, futures contracts at a forward rate of $1.50. Remember that the standard contract size for pounds is 62,500, so 100 would give them the 6.25 million pounds. If the exchange rate falls to 1.35, this is they'll make 1.50 minus 1.35 um, times the 6.25 million, which gives them the 0.9375 million that they would lose, and that exactly offsets the fall in the price of the pound. Okay, in the previous two examples, the spot position was chosen, so it was a multiple of the standard contract size for the futures contract. Okay, so the futures contract rose in value to exactly offset the losses in the spot market. In the real world situations, this isn't going to happen. Remember, standard contract sizes won't uh, allow you to have the exact amount of the foreign currency in many cases. I didn't point this out here, but Expiration dates are unlikely to correspond to exactly the date you close out your position, so you're not exactly going to get a perfect hedge, but you're going to offset some of the losses. And that's the goal. The goal of hedging isn't to maximize profits. It's to reduce risk. It's to make sure that you get at least a minimum amount of you know, um, money from your transaction. So if things move in the wrong direction, if the foreign currency, you know, goes up or down and it's unfavorable to your firm, you still do okay.